So I'm going to start by demoing um, one of the first tools that we provide to energy companies um, in order for you to build a pipeline uh, of projects. So you know how much money that needs to be invested in order to energize remote communities. So this is super cool. Um, what we start with is basically some geo coordinates of an area that you need mapped out. Once we've got those geo coordinates, we have an AI algorithm that basically identifies rooftops. And once those rooftops are identified, um, we have another set of algorithms which takes uh, an average load. So let's say 600 watt hours per day is how much you think these households will use on average. And then our algorithm automatically calculates um, the least cost electrification mode. So here you can see this is a site in Togo. Um, and the orange points are systems that should be installed standalone um, because the distance from the closest household is quite far. The cable costs would be quite costly to interconnect them. Um, but this cluster here, six households, um, it's recommended to interconnect them into a mesh grid using our Okra technology. Um, and so, you know, bringing all of that together, um, we can rapidly uh, size a pipeline for you. So if we look over here at the summary numbers, um, we've got 526 households that have been mapped. Um, and the least cost electrification tool um, estimates that for 600 watt hours per day average load, uh, there's $400,000 of CapEx investment that's required um, using the Okra mesh grid architecture. Um, using a traditional centralized powerhouse to serve these 526 households would cost over a million dollars. Um, so that's more than double the cost. Um, and obviously one of the main reasons why um, costs are reduced is that under the mesh grid architecture, you're not drawing expensive transmission and distribution all the way from the first house to the last. You're just connecting up um, the mesh networks. That makes sense. So that's um, SpecBoom, our least cost electrification tool. you through uh, another cool part of the software toolkit. So we've gone from the high level um, where we've done a desktop analysis using the AI software to estimate the pipeline. We can do this really quick. Um, for example, here's Togo's analysis, here's Botswana analysis. Um, we're getting a lot of information on how much capex um, do we think will need to be deployed. Will this be a profitable um, model based on expected um, energy consumption and, and revenues. Um, but we all know that we need to uh, set up a system that's appropriate uh, for what the community actually needs at the end of the day. Um, and so first things first, we can use our Okra Harvest platform that you see over here um, to set up different energy packages. Um, this is a pretty cool feature and it lets us basically limit the energy usage um, for any given day um, for individual households. So the entry A package has a 240 watt hour daily limit. Uh, the general B has a 1.8 kilowatt hour daily limit. Um, and this is really important to making sure that the networks are sized um, appropriately um, and to ensure reliability of the network. I'll show you why. So when you actually go out to uh, the community um, or the field staff has actually gone out there, um, you can use the Okra mobile app to conduct surveys of every single household. So household over here, um, first name, let's say it's Mr. Sunny, um, and last name is Day, Sunny Day. That's a lovely name, especially when it comes to uh, solar electrification. And this is their mobile number and um, the energy package um, that they've agreed to sign up to. Um, is this one over here, which is 530 um, per kilowatt hour, and it gives them a 750 watt hour per day daily limit. Um, once they've agreed to that in the survey, you basically just click save, and this information automatically goes through into the harvest backend. Once you've completed these surveys for every single house in the community, um, you can use the Harvest platform to automatically generate a bill of materials 
So you have the exact amount of CapEx um, for, for the load from this community. So here's a summary over here, one that we've um, already worked out for 85 households. Um, the total amount of PV, battery, um, and cable length required, um, making it easy for you to procure for your Okra mesh grid. Um, and it's even got, um, for each individual house, um, the exact amount of uh, PV and battery capacity that should be installed. Um, yep, so that was the lower level network planning tool feature, um, which is used in conjunction with Harvest Desktop and Harvest Mobile. Cheers. I'm going to give you a demo of the Harvest Desktop platform. So we looked at the energy packages before and then doing the survey to size the bill of materials. Now let's look at a community that's actually been connected uh, into an Okra mesh grid. So here's a community. As you know, um, the Okra pod um, enables solar and battery to be installed um, at a household. And then the pod does uh, remote monitoring, um, mobile money billing, and then remote control of the system. Um, but the cool feature is that if households are close to each other, um, they can actually be interlinked from one pod to the next with a plug and play cable. And then you've got our software sharing power between these households, um, making energy more reliable, uh, more available and less panels and batteries required. So here's an Okra mesh network. And you can see because there's a bit of a distance, a second network was set up um, and then a standalone system and then another one over here. And yeah, there's mesh grids throughout this entire community providing power. So now that we've got this set up and there's all this data being reported from the IoT, what does it look like and what can we tell from it? Well, we can see top level metrics in the overview tab that's useful for um, you know, portfolio managers or you know, executive level um, people running the energy business. What's the average daily load? What's the revenue like? Um, and what's the utilization um, for, for each of the users who are on different energy packages? You can also look at a summary of each of the communities set up and look at the uptime um, and look at um, other information such as number of households there and any actions that haven't been addressed. Um, but then going one level lower, we can look at the details associated with each of the villages in these communities. So the IoT data is coming in and showing us, you know, what's the system uptime, um, and then going a step lower, we can look at, you know, why have certain households not been paying for power, and what's the reason behind that? Um, we can see a lot of it is no credit, um, some maintenance issues, um, and some, for example, a battery has been shut off. Um, and then with this information, usually the project manager um, is figuring out how to address them. All right, all these households, we need to you know, give them a message or a call and find out why you're not topping up your credit. And maybe the case is that the household is actually not there because it's farming season, or maybe they're just not there at all. Um, and based on that information, you can um, address it appropriately, which might involve even um, moving the system somewhere else or changing the package of the household so they find it more affordable to um, top up their credit. Um, going to another feature through the Harvest platform, um, we know that an important part of uh, last mile electrification is to make sure that the communities actually benefit from this power, um, but also to make sure that these networks are, are profitable for the energy companies delivering them. So productive appliance financing is actually something that's really cool that we can do uh, through the IoT. So here's a range of different appliances and the daily repayment rate. So keep in mind um, the way that most customers are billed um, through the Okra platform is through prepaid and on a different energy rate. So basically households top up balance onto their IoT device by paying with mobile money and that balance slowly um, comes down based on the energy they use. Um, but now you can also finance an appliance to the household. 
and say, in addition to the energy use, energy that you use on a daily basis, you'll be paying 377 real for your rice cooker. Um, and when that balance comes down to zero, the household actually gets cut off from power um, by our software, which encourages them to keep topping up their balance. Um, so let's check it out. Here's a house, I think it's 18. Um, let's open it up. Um, this household has um, their you know, energy rate they're paying. Um, this is their current balance and they have a rice cooker that they're financing and they paid off 48% of it. Um, this is pretty cool to see because um, it means that the household is uh, using more energy um, and they're using a rice cooker that is obviously helping their livelihood and that increased use of energy is increasing the profitability um, of this network. So a range of appliances can be financed and it's a very important aspect of keeping that um, impact high and the average load um, high in these networks. Uh, the final feature that I wanted to show you is um, the maintenance feature. So there is a lot of data that's coming through uh, from these IoT devices. So again, let's just jump into a house. Actually, I've pre-opened one. Um, so this is house 31. You can see a lot of information from you know, the PV performance, the battery performance to the household load, etc. But you don't necessarily want to see all that information. You can see it through analytics here um, or here. Um, but what most energy companies and project managers want to see is the key metrics. What do I actually have to do and what's um, the importance behind it? So right now there are no fresh insights because um, they've all um, been actioned. But um, if we look at the actions um, and let's look at, for example, this community, Prexpen, um, the insights pop up. So it says for this house, our data automatically picks up and says, fix faulty wiring for solar. Um, and so the project manager looked at this insight and then decided that we need to check the PV cable, check the fuse. Um, and if none of those two work, then reset the pod. And if that doesn't work, replace the pod. Um, and that's because um, there's no solar power coming into the battery. Um, here's another insight that popped up. Um, check battery for tampering. Um, and basically our algorithms suggest that um, solar PV is being generated, um, but um, there is no load that the customer is being billed for. They've got low usage. So perhaps they're actually tampering and connecting directly to the battery, um, stealing power from the network. Um, and so these insights and actions um, can be used by the project managers and the field staff um, who are often in the community to actually quickly identify issues and conduct maintenance. Um, and by doing all of this assessment remotely um, and using local people on the ground, it's really reducing the operations and maintenance costs um, while maintaining very high network uptime and happy paying customers. Cool. Thanks for that.